in two consecutive weeks, we've had hundreds of thousands of people marching through the streets of London. Uh, those marches have been remarkably peaceful. I think on Saturday, there were seven or eight arrests, less arrests than you would find on a normal um, night in the West End of London. The people marching in their hundreds of thousands were marching with a very clear message. First of all, a unified call for a ceasefire. Um, they're calling for that uh, because in the past few weeks, the bombing campaign launched by Israel has now killed over 8,000 Palestinians, 3,500 of them children. Latest estimates from UN uh, authorities that, that is that there are more than 1,000 children who lie under the rubble unaccounted. So our argument is that there is absolutely no humanitarian justification not to call for a ceasefire unless you agree with the Israeli defense minister that Palestinians aren't actually humans, but they're inhuman animals. So that's the first call. And secondly, people um, are calling for an end to the violence. They want a ceasefire, but they are also recognizing that we need to deal with the root causes of the violence, which is Israel's ongoing military occupation I mean, of Palestinian land. So yeah. that's why people are marching. They are indeed, extremely indeed. peaceful uh, marching. Uh, I did, and, you're, that, will, and you're right. Will continue Mr. To march Mr. Mr. Jamal, Mr. Jamal, you're right. It, it, the number of arrests is nine, and that is fewer than you would get at a big football match. You're absolutely right. But I, and given the number of people that turn out, it's probably three times the size of a football audience, uh, football crowd. But I say again, how do you respond to the disquiet that the chanting is causing? Well, I think what we have here is something that is deeply problematic. We have seen um, from our political leaders, and I, 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 you know, I include within that our Home Secretary, mm. over the past few weeks, from the very beginning of these demonstrations, attempts to reframe them and to demonize them. So we have seen in particular the suggestion from the Home Secretary that there is something problematic um, with even the display of the Palestinian flag, that it should be considered that if you are marching, holding up the flag of Palestine, that should render you to be under suspicion of supporting terrorism or undertaking an anti-Semitic act. We have seen consistently the suggestion that the legitimate slogan of liberation and justice from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, is an anti-Semitic slogan. That's a grotesque reframing of what that chant means, and I'm very happy to explain. Why, why would you Why would you say that's a grotesque reframing? Well, what the chant means is this. Uh, if When people chant that, and I speak as a Palestinian, but also as the leader of the largest solidarity organization for the Palestinian people in Europe, what the chant speaks to is the reality of the nature of the oppression yeah. that right. Palestinians where, are subject to. Where are the Israelis meant to go? Well, can I, if I explain what the chant means, and then, then you Bri can see briefly, the, because, the yeah. answer to that question. So, um, Palestinians live under a system of oppression no. that the leading okay. human rights... Where are the Israelis meant to go, Mr. Jamul? Nick, if you let me answer the question, well, you're, you'll see... You're not, you'll, you'll like, see, respectfully. You'll, 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 all right. I am, if you allow me the chance. So Palestinians live under a system of apartheid, as affirmed by Human Rights Watch. Oh, Mr. Amnesty Jamal, I wish you'd answer the question. Why won't you answer the question? Where are the Israelis meant to go? So I've asked three times now. Even Nick, even Nick, two weeks before the current escalation of violence, the ex-head of Mossad said this is a system of apartheid. I, I've asked now, four what does that times mean? where well, that, the Israelis that means are meant Palestinians to go. Palestinians in Gaza, which is adjacent to the Mediterranean Sea, live under siege and legally no, under no, occupation. I, you're, I, I don't, by the way, a lot of what you say is true. I, I, I would question apartheid state, but for the fifth time, and this will have to be the last time, I am sorry, where are the Israelis meant to go? Palestinians living in... And I'm afraid that's it. I, I have tried. I am grateful for your time, and I wish we could have explored that, but I gave you five opportunities, and you've not been able to tell me where you believe the Israel, Israelis and Jewish people should go. So we have to terminate it there. Thank you for your time. Ben Jambol is Director of Palestine Solidarity Campaign. Nick, how dare you cut somebody off who represents one of the largest organisations in Europe when because, he's explaining... No, no, from the because I asked him four times where the Israelis would go. No, actually it was five. And five times he chose to take me down other avenues. And I only have a limited but, 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 time with but people. But you didn't... Ever since I've been listening to LBC, which is since the start of this episode of Israel and, and of Palestine, mm -hmm. every day 
One of your presenters says, from the river to the sea is anti-Semitic and blah, blah, blah. Yet oh, here you have somebody who represents it. one of the largest. No, you're explaining it in what you think it means. No, Hussein, but when somebody who's at Hussein, the, uh, my at the question protest was, is saying it... My question wasn't... Yeah. No, I didn't ask him how to... If you recall... No, you didn't allow no, him no, to... Uh, no, no, Hussein, sh- right, one second, please, on. sir. I asked okay. him what he made of the disquiet... He chose not to answer that with his two first answers. I then up, regarding what? Dis, w- whether he was upset at causing disquiet to Jewish people with the chanting that right. went on. Are, so are, we had are a, you so, upset with the disquiet? So we had, so we had, let me just finish. So we had quite a lengthy history lesson there. And then I actually drilled down to one of the chants and I asked, what could he explain? Where, where do yeah. the Israelis go? And five times he chose not to answer. It's a great okay. misfortune and I hope to welcome him back to the show when we can get answers to questions for saying. Right. I have one question for you, Nick. Please. If you can answer that, I'll be mm. very happy. Go ahead, sir. Let me kick you out of your studio, sit in your chair and run the show for the next 75 years, and then when you attack me and uh, justify it, I turn around and say, no, 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 let's not talk about 75 years ago. Let's talk about you throwing can stones at I, me now, and can that's not I, acceptable. Can I kill your babies and mutilate them? There's no proof of that, Nick. How oh, that's. I think, think that's that probably a red... I mean, I don't know who you take. If you accept that the United Nations is as, uh, about as good an organisation, they accept the, the massacres of the 7th of October. Right. Uh, are you going to let me respond or are you going to yeah, mute me? sure, yeah. OK. It was a Jewish reporter told by a Jewish army that babies' heads were mutilated. No, I didn't say heads. Would, that, 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 yes, burned, I didn't whatever. say heads. No, that, I that, 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 that reporter then retracted that statement and said the army no, did no, not show me. No, there are... And, I mean, people are having breakfast, but there are babies who were riddled with bullets. So if you think that those well, oh, yes, are legitimate Yeah, tactics, in, in Gaza... Underneath the buildings, no, is no, that no, what you're talking is, about? No, the October 7th attacks, of course. That's horrific. Oh, the October 7th That's hor- attacks. It's horrific. But not the, about the 30, 20 odd days since then. No, it's horrific. You don't want to talk about that. No, I've just, I've just said it is horrific. The death of people in every day right. is a tragedy. Let, let's go of back course to it the is. fundamental question, well, Nick. Uh, again, if I take uh, over your studio. I've, we've just been down that line. Respectfully, Hussein. Thank you. Good morning, Nick. I was actually calling in response to Hussein, actually, the previous previous caller. Oh, yeah. All right, yeah. Um, you know, quite frankly, to trivialise the blah, blah, blah of the protesters or the current anti-Semitic climate, which we find ourselves living in, or to have the audacity to say that there is absolutely no proof for the maiming and torturing and killing of our children it is, quite frankly, disgusting. And it's because of people like Hussein that well. we are fostering a climate of hatred and anti-Semitism. Uh, 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 okay, okay. Uh, Justine, I understand your anger, and I record that. Hussein's not here to defend himself, so I, I will end it there. I'm very grateful for your input. Thank you.